I need to see if this was like me in a fever, uh, a fever dream, literally. Uh, fevery as fuck. Uh, I was sick and I was reading this and I was like, wait, what? So this, this latest Harada's Bar episode doesn't have him talking to anybody else. Um, planning, right? But it also talks about specifically, uh, this, which is... So the title was Game Release Dates, and I'm like, huh, what is, what is he talking about in this? So let's just fire this up really fast. Sakahara-san. Hmm. The program is Untitled Talk and Variety Show. So, no, there's like no goal here. They're just like planning out the next season of Harada's Bar type stuff. So it's just like, you know, chatting about things. How many views does this have? Not many, considering what she potentially says in here. Right. Yeah, あの、過剰書きにしといたんですよ。That some really strange guys. I think it's about time we put them out there. So they want to talk about like tech and devs, people that have been there for a long time. We can't have a big gathering, so it'd be about three of them. Maybe four or five? If it's four or five people, we'd like to have like ten or fifteen. ですからね。いや、これそこれいいじゃん、やるべきじゃない。なんで前言ったように、あの、意外とデータがあらないと思う多いんですよ。そうですね。うん。なんで、ただどっかでやんなきゃいけないって言ってやってきてないじゃない。
that we've we've reached that point in time now. So a lot of the folks that are making fighting games now uh, actually grew up as people playing fighting games, either professionally or hardcore fighting game players in uh, their heydays, right? In either the 90s or the early 2000s and stuff like that. They had to eventually, yeah, combo their ass up the corporate ladder to get to that point. So now that's where Tekken is at, where there's a lot of people on the Tekken project that grew up as, as players that were pretty good. Yeah, the ex-players will just win. And that, that's what he's saying is that, like, yeah, a lot of devs aren't good at their games, right? You know, like, it's, it's kind of hard to find people that are strictly devs because devs focus on a lot of the times just like fun and shit like that. Just we're just going to find the fun. And usually they're not players where they're focused on like the high level and competitive. No, we're just going to find the fun here. And so a lot of games nowadays uh, focus so much on the competitive element, mostly because the people behind the game's creation are ex-competitive players. So they really take into consideration, you know, the highest level of the game. Of where like, oh, I remember this as a high level player, this was annoying to deal with, I remember this. It can either lead to some great situations where they really cover their asses in some ways, but it can also lead to some situations where some fighting games can leave out the fun in, in some ways where it's specifically meant for a very specific tier of player. It can be a blessing and a curse in some situation and some fighting games can benefit from it and some can't. It's, it's literally a balancing act. でもなんか一応ほら。ゴロゴロ。そうそうそう。あの年配プレイヤーからの感想が集まるだけな気がする。うん。なるほど。で、あとはですね、えっと、この間あのほら、えっと、格ゲー連合会でしょ。あそこで
because he's fucking right. People, people essentially don't know. People called everything trash, so it's like, so what actually is trash? So re check this out. Oh. Games that never got sequels because they were so bad. <laughs> See this, and this is another when he says there's a bunch of games that never got sequels because they were so bad. Um, and Harada says, I mean, whether it sucks or not, if it sells, we'll make it. That's really not how it works in this industry. Um, painfully true, right? If a game sucks and it sells, they'll make another one, obviously, because he's he's being he's just being real. But I think this is extremely apparent for something like Bandai Namco, and that makes perfect sense for like Bandai Namco as a company, right? That just they're they're so big, they're so huge. That's just the way they operate. That's why they are as big as they are. But this doesn't apply to certain other devs. Um. This actually doesn't apply to Capcom, weirdly enough. Like, Capcom somehow has this funny, uh, stuck-up, like, artsy way of approaching shit, where even in situations, and I've, I've heard this from internal Capcom folks in the past, where even if something will sell, they won't do it, where even if they know they're going to get success, they won't do it. Here, and, and in some ways it works out, and in some ways it doesn't work in the reverse way. The best example is Resident Evil 6 to 7. They did not need to change anything about Resident Evil 6 because the game sold amazing. It was actually the best selling Resident Evil game. But it got, it caused them a lot of bad word of mouth. Even though the game sucked, they could have just made another game that sucks just as much and made even more money. They could have just extended that forward. However, the bad press and what people had to say about Resident Evil 6 really changed the way Capcom was going to make 7. It actually changed everything. So even though they could have just taken the money, they didn't. They took it to heart and they redesigned Resident Evil completely. They essentially doubled down on a new vision and made something completely different and new. Guess what the complete new thing did for them? It sold better. It actually changed for the better. They took a crazy risk and they were thinking in the long term. So some companies have like the Bandai Namco way of just like, yeah, fuck it, just make it type of mentality, which isn't bad. That's what makes money. That's the way companies work. But Capcom at times will like, even if, so, even, even if things are relatively successful, they won't make a sequel to it. Like the Mega Man game was a low budget game. Why didn't they make a sequel to it? That's easy fucking money. Capcom has a lot of like easy fucking money situations that they won't jump at. And in some situations, we'll take giant risks with other things and then hope it just works out. Like I would like to say that I wish Capcom had this fucking mentality sometimes. I wish, like, I wish Nintendo had this mentality that he's talking about. I wish that sometimes if something just made money and seems like a good idea that they'll just do it, right? I wish sometimes this shit applied to some of my favorite Japanese game companies like Sega and stuff like that, but it doesn't. Like, and this mentality is very true for some companies and not others, and it makes a lot of sense why he's saying this in, rel in relation to Bandai Namco. Because Bandai Namco is a huge fucking company. They put out like 900 games a year or some shit. And they make a ton of fucking money off of it. Even though not every game is a 9 million unit seller. They put out 60 fucking games that sell a few hundred thousand copies each. And they just dump them out. There's, I feel like every other week there's a Bandai Namco game coming out. It's fucking crazy how big the company is. So anyway. It's just an interesting contrast of like some side of game development, especially Harada's side, compared to, like, Capcom and some others. <laughs> Whether it sucks or not, if it sells, we'll make it. And yep, that's, that's usually the way a lot of game development works in a lot of situations. And then you get some mystery weirdos, like, you know... Nintendo and Capcom and shit, and so, stuff just makes no goddamn sense. It doesn't sell, nothing gets made. 
If there are seeds of hope that come together when the developer's needs, then it will also depend on whether the buyer's needs exist. Right? And he's, uh, I love it that he's essentially describing like the, the champion moment, right? Where you get somebody in development that is willing to sort of like put everything on the line to convince the higher ups that a buyer's market does exist for this franchise or this product and we can hopefully like you know put something together to make it work out i think in this situation okubo with soul caliber was likely the best example of this but ultimately probably did not meet the needs that executives wanted it to hit and he eventually left the company Meaning of Kusoge has recently changed. Different generations perceive it differently. Old games that are made impossible to beat or are like filled with bugs and glitches, right? Like that, that's, that's a Kusoge. Although I'll bitch up a, I'll bitch up a fucking shitty river about bad online and netcode and matchmaking for games like pissing me off and preventing me from wanting to get better. I will absolutely, I'll bitch up a river. I'll, it, my bitching will turn into a, into a goddamn speedboat that goes up river of me bitching at the fact that I really like this game, but fuck it's online and fuck it's stupid matchmaking because good fucking Lord, I would, I like this game, but fuck this shit. <laughs> like I'll definitely, I'll definitely bitch up a river like crazy when it comes to the elements that are not the actual fighting game itself. When it comes to external elements that prevent me from wanting to enjoy it. Joan Rivers. It's different these days. Quality is now the norm. Yep, there you go. He said it. These days, Kusoge just means crazy. He said it. Harada, uh, it's nice that Harada gets it. It's nice that Harada understands. He gets it. You get a game that just gives you a little bit of crazy shit and people just lose their fucking minds. They can't DNF duels this crazy piece of shit fighting game. It's like, what the? And I feel like the, the only really modern day example of this that recently happened is actually DNF duel, right? Like everyone just loses their goddamn minds because characters, because Korean Jesus was OP. <laughs> like, what the hell? No. Mm -hmm. なんか課金誘導がひどいとか、そういうことなんか発売日からオンラインのサーバー落ちて遊べないとか、そういう強化でのクソゲーなのでなんか愛すべきところがないクソゲーみたいなのも結構あるあるから世代でちょっと捉え
to to a degree where it's like would would people that play modern fighting games even be able to like comprehend that shit would like the the modern player be like oh god like can we really accept the fact that there's like an 8-2 or a 9-1 in this game it's like i don't i think it's just because of the perspective that people just have this different understanding of what a fighting game is <laughs> so check this out Arata's personal release date predictions I'm going to go over this one by one this one might be sort of in the danger zone danger zone for sure these titles I can tell the release date for well, you know, maybe for Virtua and stuff, I really can't read a date for Virtua. The fuck is he talking about, Chad? Did he just say it? So he's talking about the danger zone. What is he referring to? Anyone, can anyone take a wild guess what he's referring to? The danger zone? These titles I can tell the release date for. You know, maybe for Virtua and stuff. I can't really read a date for Virtua. You don't need to criticize. You can sort of imagine, though, right? Aoki-san said this before. So, this video comes out post-Evo. Probably was recorded post-Evo. And there's now a danger zone. Which is, what fighting games are potentially going to come out against our fighting game? Is there another fighting game that could be launching right next to, to Bandai Namco's next big fighting game? What is Bandai Namco's next big fighting game? Pretty clear it's going to be like Tekken 8. It was just announced. It looks... Uh, 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 maybe it's the Tekken 1 remake? Whatever Tekken game they have working on, that is now their danger zone. Where they're going to have like... And this is what the developers call it. It's like a three-month gap between like the, the beginning release date and the after release date of do we have any competition? Is there anyone around our launch date that is essentially in threatening to us? And this li literally just happened with like Forspoken coming out against like God of War and they're like, get the fuck away. That's a danger zone. You're, you're literally sending your game to die. We literally watched Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the best games of the previous year, die because it was in a danger zone of way too many other games that was coming out. And this is the exact same thing for fighting games, which is a niche genre. You cannot be in the danger zone, especially when you're in competition with other fighting games. So this is dangerous. This is the context of which he's talking about. I'm pretty sure. I could be completely fucking wrong on this, but from the way I've heard these terms used before, think of it within that context. Release date predictions. This one might be sort of in the danger zone. So something is in the threatening scale of like when potentially Bandai Namco's next big fighting game, which might be Tekken, could show up. Danger zone for sure. And he's like, he's looking at the game. He knows what it is, but he can't say it, right? He's looking at the game that could be in the danger zone. There's titles I can tell the release date for. You know, maybe for Virtua and stuff, just straight up saying Virtua Fighter. Like, what? Just straight up saying fucking Virtua Fighter might have something around this time frame, right? I really can't tell for Virtua Fighter, because it seems like they're... He's practically confirming what we all know, that they're making a new VF. Like, the free-to-play thing of VF was so big, and the numbers were so huge, of course they're fucking making another Virtual Fighter. Just randomly mentions Virtual Fighter for no fucking reason. And then directly says... And then directly says... You can sort of imagine... Aoki-san said this before, the lead producer of fucking Virtual Fighter! What?! So he's speculating. He's just straight speculating. It's not his company. He's not an insider. He doesn't actually know this information, but he's sort of speculating. Oh, yeah, Aoki-san's going to have his Virtual Fighter game possibly around this time frame. So there's already like a very wide assumption. He's not breaking NDA. He's just speculating. He's got the, uh, the inclination that based on previous conversations, Sega's making a fucking VF game. And it's probably going to be free to play and shit, right? It's probably going to follow all the same steps that the previous VF game did and gave it all the success that it did last year, you know? 
This title's I think I know, it's just natural to know in the industry, you know, you just know when things are going to be happening. But Virtua Fighter, I have no idea. You know how he's not saying Virtua Fighter, he's just saying Virtua. He's not pinpointing it down to being one thing. This is just for people that are like in the know, that are like curious about the industry. Virtual racing. That's exactly what he yeah, Virtual tennis. That's what he's saying. It's the return of virtual on. That's virtual on. That's not virtua. That's different. It's virtual quest and virtual cop. Those are all coming back. That's what he's talking about. He never talked about virtual fighter. He just talked about virtua something. You know? You know when Street Fighter 6 will come out? I can totally tell. He won't say when, because we all know, right? And there's a really good reason why he has a pretty good idea when it'll come out. And it's the exact same shit I've been telling you guys for years. <laughs> it's the exact same shit I've been telling you for years of like when we can sort of call the date of when Street Fighter 6 will come out. They didn't tell you, right? They would never talk to leak any shit like that. For example, when you have neighbors, <laughs> you know what time they had to work in the morning and stuff like that. If you play sports, you usually know what rival teams are practicing. So you'll know on that level. You'll know when people usually go to work. You'll know when people usually practice against this if you're just around them constantly. If they're your neighbors, if they're people that are like relatively close to you, if not living in the same house, house as you, you kind of have an idea when they operate, right? And that's the same exact thing with Capcom and their fighting game division and how they released fighting games. Street Fighter, for the past 10 plus years, has never not released a mainline Street Fighter game outside of February of every single year. Street Fighter 4, February. Street Fighter Cross Tekken, February. Street Fighter 5, February. The only other games that are big Capcom fighting games that launch outside of February are Marvel games. And even Marvel 3 launched in February. And then Ultimate Marvel 3 was like November. But Marvel Infinite was one of the big ones that launched in September and oh fuck. Bad shit happened. It was the one game that released outside of the usual window was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And I'm not saying the release window of the game set up for some bad shit. I'm saying there is one example of a game not doing well performance-wise from Capcom, especially, and it was MVCI, and it, and it was out in uh, August. SF4 released in July. Did it, though? Did it really? Because I was there. <laughs> Let me... Okay, let's just... I love it when people just chime in and they're like, Street Fighter 4 was in July. So the problem is, is that you just Google Street Fighter 4 release date and you see this, right? I get it. You see July 18, 28 to 2008, and you're like, man, it came out in July of 2008. Did it though? Did it really? Because if you actually look up the physical release date, that is the arcade version. It came out in February on PlayStation and Xbox. February 12th, 17th, and 20th. That's the arcade release. The like, like 16 character build or some shit. Or eight character build. I mean, I can tell you because I was fucking there for, for the arcade release as well as this. The beta? <laughs> no, it wasn't a beta. No, that was an arcade release. The actual public release of the game for every other Street Fighter game is always in February. Street Fighter Cross Second barely missed it. Uh, it's in March. I believe this one got delayed a week due to some DLC shenanigans. So shit can happen, but pretty much end of February, March. And let's talk about uh, Marvel versus Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds in February. And then we also got uh, Street Fighter 5. And where's the goddamn Wikipedia? Street Fighter 5. And we'll pull it over here. Also, uh, February 16th worldwide. I mean,. I've been making content about all of these games since their launch, so I'm heavily rooted in the actual, like, dates and details of when this shit happens.
外れたことはないよもちろんプレイヤー界においては原田さんは他社の発売日を知ってるんじゃないかと思ってもいますああでも逆みたいだよなんかそうですか、うん、僕はなんかそういうコメント原田ら知ってるんじゃないかと思ってるよ知ってるに決まってんじゃん of course I know I can tell you've been around this fucking industry long enough to know when they're gonna do shit to know when they're gonna drop stuff they're not like sitting here exchanging release dates knowing like hey are you gonna do this in the same way that I know do I have confirmation no it's in the same way that does Harada know does he have confirmation no But he knows. It's like, I don't think Harada's gonna, he doesn't say when Street Fighter 6 is coming out. All he's saying is that he knows when it's gonna come out. He has a pretty good idea. How many years do you think I've been doing this? It would be bad if they were just telling me directly. Yeah, Harada's saying the exact same shit why it's like, I just have these offhand predictions of what is going to happen and what developers are going to do in some situations, just because that makes a lot of fucking sense. Yeah, and he literally is describing it. We'll be like, give us a little space around then, and you get moments like that, where it's like, I'm not going to tell you guys when our game's coming out, but what's happening in this time frame, you know? Because they don't want to... Literally, they don't want to compete with each other. They want, they actually want each other to have their own individual spaces to thrive. Because once again, as the fighting game genre, um, you don't want to polarize the other fighting games around your genre. You really don't want to do that. It's too small of a genre to do that shit. So, for the most part, they get an idea of when this shit is going to happen, and they sort of like, oh, okay, then we'll just spread this out a little bit here. Yeah, and just by him hearing other devs say like, oh, I'm just, I wish I could, I'm just kind of busy right now. They know exactly, like they're crunching their ass off on like Street Fighter 6, right? That's all they know. It's like, oh, I just ran into a bunch of like the Capcom guys at a bar and they were crunching their ass off. <laughs> oh, he's the takoyaki guy. How funny. All right. Yeah, this was, this was funny. I wasn't expecting Harada just to be talking about the release date of Virtual Fighter. <laughs> What? Just to be casually dropping, like, hey, when do you think Virtua is coming out? Oh, that's, yeah, that's potentially in the danger zone. Like, so the one thing that I got out of this video, right, is that Harada talks a bit about understanding when things are going to come out in the Japanese games industry so that they don't essentially collide with other games and, and it, it essentially like polarize and, and just consume each other. You know, you don't want you don't want fighting game cannibalism out there. It just doesn't make sense. Also, just casually drops the term Virtua when it comes to the danger zone of one of their games that they have a danger zone which is when they're planning to release one of their games most likely the next tekken is somewhere in the future and it potentially being in a danger zone with virtual bowling you know i really wasn't ready uh to to hear the word virtua and aoki san and the people that are working on virtual fighter damn man that's some exciting shit. <laughs>